Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Conversations, a series of dialogues with leaders about leadership and their life. And this time, we have the pleasure of uh, featuring architect Paul Strom. He is the senior vice president and a partner with uh, HOK in St. Louis. And before we get started with the dialogue, I wanted to say a few words about this series of events. Usually we bring prominent architects and designers uh, and we talk about their work. We talk about the buildings and the products of their work. But this series is about leadership. What does it take to be a leader, to be educated and developed as a leader? And uh, what aspects of life contribute to the shaping up of that leader? And why is it important for architects and designers in particular to think about leadership? Now, leadership is not necessarily something that we explicitly teach in the classroom. But nevertheless, as we will learn, it is probably the most important thing that we could learn. And so this forum is a masterclass in and about leadership. And with that introduction, I'd like to extend a very warm Ball State welcome to architect Paul Strong. So please help me welcome Paul Strong. So Paul, uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your work and where you are at and what you do? Um, I'm a practicing architect. Uh, I'm the practice leader of, of our studio on healthcare. So I have, sort of by the numbers, I have around 400 people that ultimately uh, report um, up through to me. Uh, with three other partners or four other partners, uh, we lead the healthcare practice globally. So those 400 people are in uh, 12 offices in four countries. My family unit was, my mom was a surgical nurse and a, later a psych psychiatric nurse and my father was an educator and and so they um, are the primary people that that shaped me but you know when kids today you all go to you know for the summer you go to South Africa and Asia and stuff and you know I ran around the fields in southern Indiana and so I don't I didn't have the sort of uh, rich diversity of uh, travel experiences and and life uh, life-changing events that, that you all had. Um, but I learned, um, you know, I learned how to work really hard. Um, one of the things about living in the, in the country and, you know, you could say, well, what do you do for your summer job? Well, I worked on farms, you know, I, I did manual labor on farms. And, and uh, later I was influenced by my uh, uncle uh, who, had a building business and he built houses and I built houses for five summers. I got out of school and um, inflation was, you know, skyrocketing. Um, there were not hardly any jobs, probably similar to what it is now. Jobs were really tough and I, I got a job in a firm called um, Smith Hinchman and Grills um, in Detroit because my wife was finishing um, uh, her law degree at the University of Michigan and I lived in Ann Arbor. We lived in Ann Arbor and I drove into Detroit every day and that's the job, um, one of like two jobs or three jobs I could get. And um, the first job I put, was put on was um, a big hospital. And, um, and so it was sort of by, by choice, not by choice that I got assigned to that. And, um, I think at the time people thought, oh, well, hospitals are, you know, they're not cool and why would you design them? And, um, and I might have had that 
pr impression, you know, for the first few days that I was there. But as I started to work, I, it became something very conscious that I could, could really um, be committed to and see the, the value of. And, um, and that was really the start of, uh, of passage for me to start to become a um, sort of somebody that focused on, on healthcare architecture. All of these professors sort of challenged me and they embraced uh, what I did, they encouraged me. Um, maybe at the time I didn't always understand their uh, method of encouragement, uh, but it was, it was good. And uh, I learned, uh, learned a lot um, from, um, from these folks and um, some of them are still here, so you all are, are still reaping the benefits from, um, from all the wonder that they were able to teach. In what ways do you think the profession has changed and is changing, and why is that important for the new generation of architects to understand? Boy, I don't think we have enough time, Mahesh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to deal with this one. Um, well, I think the profession is changing in that um, there's more expected of us, um, of the profession that, that are sort of designing buildings. Um, we're expected to do it uh, better, smarter, faster, more coordinated, less expensively. Um, this economic, um, sort of the, the last three or four years has, has caused a compression of, of, um, of architects' fees. Um, yet clients, and maybe rightfully so, expect the same kind of um, quality of service, and that, that's a challenge for all of us um, to, to do the work. One of my you know, great pleasures about giving back is that, um, this was a psych hospital I did in southern Missouri where somebody had been institutionalized for 30 years. Um, we worked in, well I was part of a team that designed this new psych hospital, patient moves in, go back and see uh, all the patients move into the new facility. The patient, uh, go back and see the administrator six months later and they said, uh, you know, I want to, you know, I want you to go, I want to go, I'll just call him Joe, go see Joe. And so I went and saw Joe and, um, and Fred told me that for 30 years he has sat there and just done this. And he has been non-functioning, a non-functioning sort of alive person. And he moves into this new environment, and the only thing different was the environment. And all of a sudden, Joe is up um, washing his clothes. Joe is up preparing food. Joe is up socializing, meeting with other people. And then you say, you know, have you made a difference? You know, by your building, did you make a difference? And, you know, on that one, we made a difference. Helped Joe out a lot. And helped out the hundreds of people that come through that building like Joe. So when somebody says to you, well, I don't think buildings can really make a difference. You know, you can email me and I'll be happy to talk to you about how buildings can make a difference. And the people that design those buildings can make a difference. <laughs>